Well, good morning everyone and welcome back to the Welcome Grove Homestead. Nathan and I, we're going bachelor today. Man is <laughs> off on an adventure. I'm sure you'll see lots about that in this video, but I just wanted to point out this lovely field behind me. I'm sure in the last video you saw that we had mowed it for the first time. It's uh, a one of our, it's our primary pasture, uh, but it's also a really high quality hay field. So we are mowing it down so we can put some animals out in it and we are gonna bale it this weekend. Uh, my neighbor Randy's gonna come over and we are going to uh, tether it today. Uh, and, and for me, and probably for you since you haven't done this either, this is all kind of a learning experience. So it's actually really cool that we have a neighbor who's willing to take us under his wing, show us the ropes on how to go through the haying process. Um, just as kind of like a very basic bare bones explanation, when you have a field that has tall grass hay, right? Or, or just tall grass if you're, if you're baling grass, uh, there's a process to go through. And uh, it will change a little bit depending on what kind of equipment you use, but I want to tell you what our process is going to look like. We have a drum mower, which has two spinning drums with blades on it that I just pulled across the whole uh, field, uh, back and forth, back and forth in circles, kind of like how you mow a front lawn. But then it just, instead of mulching it up, it lays it down in long pieces. That's your hay. Uh, from there, it put it in kind of windrows, and you can see out here how those, there's nice fat rows that kind of went behind the cutter. Those don't dry out very well in this uh, in this climate and on most climates across the US There are some real dry areas where you're gonna have uh, Those windrows and that's perfectly acceptable and the heat will cook it just fine But out here in Tennessee, uh, we need to spread that out So we're gonna use a piece of equipment called a tether a tether has like a bunch of fingers and it'll pick it up and kind of throw it everywhere and just spread it out evenly in the field <laughs> then the sun sits there and bakes it right uh, and dries it out nice and uh, nice and dry so then uh, when we are ready to bale it uh, it's not moist because you don't want moist ba uh, bales of hay because they'll just sit there and rot uh, they also if you put moist bales of hay in your barn they'll combust catch on fire burn your barn down mm -hmm. really a bad day for a farmer in that situation <laughs> Uh, the next step, after you've kind of thrown it everywhere, it sat for a day and dried out, then you use something called a rake. The rake is going to then put it into uh, windrows that are going to be uh, kind of set in, the, in prime positions for the baler, which is another piece of equipment to come down, grab it, and turn it into bales. Now those bales that you see um, will vary. Sometimes you might have dr driven down the uh, country road and seen round balls of hay out in the field. Uh, or, or, or like um, five by four or four by four just circles and you might have wondered what those are. Those are actually bales of hay. They're called round bales. Uh, they're similar to the square bales except they're quite a few times bigger than that. Uh, we're looking at hay prices out here in Tennessee and oh my goodness, the difference between here and California is nuts. Uh, we were paying 20, 15 to 20 dollars for a square bale. Here they sell them for like six dollars a square bale. Uh, so what a round bale would cost in California is like 150. You can get them for around 45 to 60 dollars, depending on the type of grass uh, or hay that you're getting. So anyway, we are going to bale this field. Um, we're anticipating that about 20 acres out here uh, was cut and. Um, or will be cut and we're gonna try to make about a hundred bales out of that. So we'll see how that works and uh, we'll take you along for the ride. In the meantime, Amanda has some exciting stuff going on today and I'm sure she can't wait to show you what's going on there. So this is my mower. Uh, I just wanted to show you real quick something that I thought was really interesting. Um, a lot of times when you're seeding a front yard or a lawn area, you go to the Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever your big box store is and you get a bag of grass seed. Um, a lot of you probably know that when gr you let grass get tall, you'll see the little seed pods at the top, um, op you know, uh, grow and then y you can either let it go to seed, which means those seeds fall out, or you cut it and just keep a nice trim front yard landscape, right? And then overseed it in the off season and you do your regular yard maintenance. Well, when you're growing hay, the same thing applies. If you let it get tall, uh, you will have lots of grass seed. And uh, I thought it was really interesting as I mowed, a lot of this you see covering up the emblem here is grass seed. That's what you'd buy in a store in a dried version. Now, there's also some bugs in this. That's fine. We will throw it back on there. And I'm gonna get my broom out and I'm gonna just kind of clean off my equipment so I leave it in fairly decent shape and ready for the next time. 
Uh, but I just thought that was super interesting. Like that is what you would buy in a large bag, 50 pound bag or 20 pound bag at the store if you were gonna overseed your lawn. Uh, obviously it might be a different, uh, uh, what, variation of, of grass, but this is what we have out in the field. It seeds itself. The nice thing about this drum mower is it is reseeding as it goes. So yes, it's cutting down um, the hay, but then it is reseeding it uh, by throwing it everywhere. Uh, and, and then that self um, replicates and, and will continue to propagate and grow uh, in the future. Now I do have the option of saying, uh, what kind of pasture do we want? Okay, then that's what we're gonna overseed with. And so we will be doing that um, in some of the, especially the lower quality pastures. We're gonna look at uh, growing specifically uh, goat or cow or horse uh, types of uh, groups of seeds. So uh, some of those include field peas and some of them include extra legumes or other things that we wanna have mixed in with the hay, uh, just to add uh, proteins and that kind of stuff to it. Uh, but for now, uh, we have what's already been out there and it's kind of a, uh, a mix uh, depending on what pasture we're working in. Uh, so we are going to eventually kind of overseed with what we want to have our mix be. Uh, and in the meantime, we're growing a lot of cow hay and goat hay. Uh, not, not specifically horse hay because they're very specific, uh, especially when they're pregnant, on what kinds of, uh, uh, of grasses they can eat. Want to say hello to all the people? Say hello to all the people? Aww. <laughs> well, these dogs are being awesome as well. They're just enjoying the fresh cut pastures and uh, the kids of course are, are looking at it and going, oh, that looks really cool. Caleb was saying the patterns of the grass look a lot like a cell phone signal. I was like, well, there, there's something that you wouldn't hear, you know, uh, 50 years ago. They would have no idea what a Wi-Fi signal looks like, but I'll show you right now, or maybe I'll have Caleb show you what he was talking about. Go ahead, tell me what you're thinking. I thought that the grass, or I don't know, but I thought that the pasture, when it was mowed, it kind of looked like a cell signal. Look at that, I think you're right. It does kind of look like a cell signal, like a Wi-Fi signal, huh? Mm -hmm. How many bars do you have? <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a phone. <laughs> That's good. All right, buddy, are you excited or what? Yeah. What are you doing right now? We're moving the turkeys to the chicken turkey tractor. To the turkey tractor, all right chicken tractor. Think it'll work for turkeys? Yeah, anything can work for turkeys. At least while they're that little still, huh? Yeah. All right, let's get going. Then you fit in an engine. <laughs> what? You're silly. They look like they're pretty happy, huh? Mm-hmm. Think they're gonna be happy in there? Yeah. At least for now. And eventually we'll be able to free range them, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll be able to move that chicken tractor around so that it's uh, able to get fresh grass every day. Mm -hmm. Hey everybody, it's me. I'm actually getting ready to head out, but before I head out, I wanted to show you guys that David is tethering the fields right now. What happens with tethering is that it is taking all the, the stuff that he mowed yesterday and it's basically flinging it around <laughs> and it spreads it out so that the hay can dry. And you can actually kind of see it at work for like a few seconds before I leave. I'm kind of bummed I'm not going to get to watch it, but right now I've got to hit the road because we are heading out to South Carolina to Roots and Refuge Farm to pick up some goats. 
and I'm taking the little kids with me. And I say little kids, I mean they're eight and nine. But let's see, are you guys ready to go? Yeah, we're yeah, ready to go. Yeah. You ready? <laughs> Audrey, you're all set up like a little bed there. Hey, <laughs> I guess I'll be semi alone if you guys are gonna nap the whole time. <laughs> I'll play 20 questions with you. Oh, good. <laughs> All right, let's hit the road. I give you beef jerky and snacks. Oh, thank you. And snacks lunch. are good. And lunch. Thank you. It's good Everything? because I have it right there. Okay, good job. Here we go. And this is not my first time driving the trailer, but it is going to be my first time driving the trailer on a highway. So, this will be fun. New adventures. We are in North Carolina. Yep. And it's How do you lovely. feel about this, Caleb? Yeah. How do you feel about the, about the, about this, mommy? How do I feel about North Carolina? So far, I see trees. Lots of That's trees. all I can see. Lots of How about lots you? Of <laughs> Good job. So there are the horses investigating the truck. Yeah, I was gonna park closer, but then the horses came and said hi. <laughs> You're a big lady, aren't you? Shoo! Shoo! Alright everybody, we are here at Roots and Refuge Farm with Jess and Maya. Maya is doing goat things, yeah. loud, loud goat things. <laughs> <laughs> but we are here picking up eight goats. That's a so lot you of goats. Really, you're like doing the oh, goat math, we're, the calculus, oh, yeah. you're just doing the whole thing. Oh yeah, we're jumping up from two goats to eight big goats, so we've got nine goats at home. We're, Oof. 17 goats. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> There's goat math for you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to apologize right now. I have not. <laughs> I'm going to apologize to David right now on video. Honey, I love you. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Well, these will be your only four currently in milk. No, you have two. I have two. I have they're two not milking a lot. No, they're not. Okay. So these are going to be like our primary, like. Right. Goat this source. is going to produce milk for you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. You're so welcome. Oh Thank my you. gosh. Thank you. Yeah. It just blesses my heart that I'm going to get to watch them and yeah. see them and that the people who love seeing Nestle's black and white spots are still going to be able to see them. Yes. Nestle will still get to be a YouTube goat. <laughs> <laughs> She's a star. She is. She's, they're all, they're all so good that I just couldn't stand to waste them in a field not being milked. And I'm getting yeah. seven gallons of milk a day, so I don't need to milk right. these goats. So. I'm not getting seven gallons of milk a day. I'm getting about a quart a day. Yeah. <laughs> so, big changes. 17 goats. <laughs> 17 goats. Mine is too soon. I think two of them are going to their new yeah. home, so I'll be down so to just 15. 15. That's yeah. still a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna help one. All right. Oh my gosh. All right, we're gonna get these goats loaded up.
do you feel about getting rid of your goats? <laughs> um, you're so good at interviewing. You know, it's very bittersweet. I think that's the best word to use for it. Um, in part, I'm sad. You know, Maggie's been with me for seven years. Wow. That's a long time. Um, yeah, our goats have only been with us for five, huh? Yeah. Seven years. So that's a long time. I mean, that's longer than I've had bear. Yeah. That's longer than I've had our cats. Like, they're pets I've had for a long time. However, I really love them. And sometimes when you love something, you have to do what's best for it rather than maybe what's easiest for you. And I know that they're too good of goats to just put in the woods to use for brush goats. And they're going to provide y'all's family with lots of milk. And so while I'm sad that I won't see them here every day, I can still look at them on your channel and I'll know that they're really living their best life and there. And you can always come visit. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> all right, our new goats are all loaded up. We're gonna hit the road. Yeah. We got several hours before we get home, so it'll be dark by the time that we actually get them home. So we will show you guys our new goats in their new home tomorrow. 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 All right, you guys ready? Yeah. Yep. Let's go. Hey goats, y'all ready for your new home? All right, we're gonna hit the road. Y'all should lay down. Well, everybody, it is morning. We can show you guys these fabulous goats in their fabulous new home. And what do you it think? is a beautiful morning. It is a beautiful morning. It's kind of crazy looking at this goat pasture. It was a little bit of a rodeo getting the goats out of the trailer last night. So we would get you get one goat out, yeah. and you're like, okay, we're good. Go back for another one. And as you're wrestling with the second goat, first one would come barreling back into the trailer I'm like, nope, I don't want to be alone. The trailer? There's a, the whole pasture for you. <laughs> oh my gosh. So that was fun. It was uh, quite a discussion. And uh, finally they saw our side and decided to go into their new home. Yes. So and they appear to be happy this morning. Yes. Also, another news, they are the same size as our cows, which is really trippy to me. <laughs> Maybe not quite the same size, They're but definitely as tall. <laughs> close enough. All right, you guys want to see them? Let's go see them. Hey, goats. How are you, ladies? So, what you doing there? Milk and clover. Yeah, and what's Audrey doing there? Milking Jane. <laughs> Look at the difference in these goats. I'm going to go right down <laughs> the back row. That's nuts. You don't know the difference until so you compare them. So it's kind of been a, a rodeo as Clover gets used to you. The cows are very opinionated about this. Hi. They're like, it's grain o'clock? Yeah. Well, I don't think Clover's gonna let down any more for me. Wow. Well, she's... Nervous? Nervous. They had a stressful night being moved, so I think that it's just gonna take a little time for them to get to trust us. We're new people in a new place. It's a lot of new. Wow. Hello. So these ladies know how to be out on a pasture. They immediately went to the good, decent browse in the back here. The little goats just have not been driven to go do it. I think partly because you can see how tall all that brush is. They're like, um, we're tiny. But, um, but yeah, these ladies, they went straight out to it this morning, so. I feel like the, uh, the Nigerians are gonna learn from them. Yeah, eventually they'll bond as a herd and they'll all stick together. This is how you be a goat. Yeah, this is how you goat. So, I'm really excited about these ladies being here. And Big John. Everybody else is a girl, but Big John. Big John is the big white weather. So we're leaving him in with his bonded herd. For now, we'll decide if we wanna put him in with the other boys, but right now he's just hanging out with them. This is Big John. Yep. Big John. So, what are your thoughts on big goats? I think they're big. They are big. Like, it's going to be a lot more work. Uh, I think I've gotten very spoiled being able to literally put a goat anywhere I want, <laughs> and now suddenly I'm having to debate and converse and use convincing words. Um, I don't speak goat yet. <laughs> Apparently, I had some smaller dialect. <laughs> this morning, milking was a little bit of a rodeo, but you know what? It's a new place with new people. Yeah. Oh, they'll get used to it, I'm sure. They, yes, I know that they behave on the stand. I've actually seen them behave on the stand before. They just, it's a new stand, it's a new place, it's a new 
everything. So those years ago when you went out to Jess's and it was like the first time you guys were hanging out, yeah. was it one of these goats you milked? It was Maggie. It was Maggie. Maggie was the first goat I ever milked. That's kind of cool history. That is. <laughs> and now she's your goat. We go way back. We go way back. <laughs> Hi Maggie. What's up little girl? Say hello to other people. See, Maggie is at the hello. door. She's like, I know there's <laughs> grain in there. <laughs> so now we gotta figure out how to grain everybody and uh, separate the goat grain from the cow grain. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think so far my favorite animals. <laughs> Saw that coming. Well, they have to see what's going on here. Oh, Betsy. Honey, you cannot take her. <laughs> Look at that size difference. <laughs> I feel like, so Maggie is seven years old. Oh, oh. it's gonna happen. Oh, four plus one, Betsy backed out. Oh, wow, oh, so how old is she? She's like less than a year? Which one, the, the babies? The, one, yeah. the babies were born in January and February. Okay, yeah, so they're uh, pretty old. They're already as tall as the Nigis. Yep. Anyway, as we were saying, Before they're we a whole different animal. Rudely interrupted. <laughs> so with these ladies now, we have a total of 17 goats on our farm. What? 17 goats, four cows. Can you, song in three there dogs. Somehow. Did you ever imagine that we would go from two goats in our backyard to 17? Nope. Hey Maggie. Maybe oh, somewhere in the dreaming category. Yeah. But not, uh, not for real yet. Didn't plan. In fact, I think even when we moved, knowing we were getting a few goats from Jets, I thought we would have seven goats total. Because okay. my wife does goat math. Explain goat math, like the concept. Goat math? Yes. Um. So, something like, I have permission to get a goat, so I got two. And that's okay. And like, then I was gonna get gifted four, and I got eight. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with goat people and Apparently, not being able to count? Hey, goats just double. You go for one, you get two. You go for four, you get eight. It's just it's goat math. It's goat math. That's how it works. Uh, so okay, so uh, more goat math. You were milking two Nigerian dwarves. Um, they are giving you roughly a pint a day. Two pints. Okay, so two pints. Um, is that right? Mm -hmm. Roughly good math. Yeah. That's David math. Uh, now, today, in one milking from these two, uh, you like quadrupled that. Well, today they gave me a half gallon jar full. Okay. So. Which is what you would get from both the goats in a whole day if you were milking twice a day. So. Um, possibly. And, I mean, and like a nervous morning. Nervous morning for two full size goats. We got what we would get in a day from two regular goats. Mom, um, I think I found it. And that will only go up one of these goats. Is it Maggie? Who does like a gallon a day for self? Nestle. Nestle. So we're looking forward to like that. It's probably time to close this out. Ooh, you can really say your line with fervor today. I really can. Let's hear it. All right. This Everybody is... ready for this? <laughs> you ready? Big moment. This is your country nerd with a sizable goat herd yeah, now. 17 of them. Sizable. Wow. <laughs> Saying you, you can, can grow, grow where you're, you're planted. planted. <laughs> and I found her favorite spot to be scratched. Yeah. Oh, good. She's right like, I'll grow right here. Plant <laughs> me right here. Yes, they're very sweet girls. <laughs>